recently Dan Green and Coach Wu, I don't know if that's his real name or if we just call him Coach Wu, have released some videos kind of talking about knee action in the squat and uh, internal rotation of the hips to drive yourself out of the hole, which seems pretty weird since knees out is pretty much the universal cue. But I decided to give it a try today, and uh, it was it was interesting. So here we go. Got my warm ups. Just gonna try using it some. That was a little uncontrolled. You'll see. But I think on the next one, much more controlled. But you can see the slight dip in, and unfortunately, the empty bar work is at the end of the video for some reason. But. It's basically like if you are sitting in the bottom of a squat and you know you have your knees out, you know you got your hips wide open and you shove your knees in to kind of stay in line with your feet, like your butt's going to rise. It's I don't know if it's it's anatomy pretty much. Your hips are open so there's space, but if you shove your knees in, there's no longer space. So, you know, your butt, your pelvis, your torso is going to rise. And like this happens without any real effort. You aren't driving with your quads really. It's just a matter of internally rotating your hips and direct pushing your knees in to kind of track over your feet instead of beyond them. So you see there, then they're over the feet and kind of shoots you up. So really what I think it does more than anything else, especially the front squat and probably high bar, is it just kind of lets you get a little bit of speed out of the hole to start driving you up. And then... I guess there's like a misconception that you should just squat with your knees in the whole time, but that's really not what either Dan Green or um, Coach Wu say. They say, coming out at your lowest point, just kind of shove them in a little bit to give you that little bit of speed and force, and then after that, you can drive out to get through your sticking point. I think here I actually have them in a lot of the way, which may or may not be good. It's a, a little bit of an experiment. So you see they go in, but then they stay in, but then they eventually kind of normalize. That was 345 for my daily max, day 10 of daily front squatting. Um, it'll be cool when I get back to lifting normally, and my back and my quads are a lot stronger than they were before, especially the back. So you got 315, pause that one, just kind of hard. He's in, and then they go out. So it's just something kind of neat to play around with. Um, I included low bar stuff too in here, but I didn't really feel that it worked as well with low bar. But I think the whole point, what needs to be remembered, is that you have to control it. I have a tendency, I know when I squat to like high reps and stuff, my knees will track in because I'll fatigue and stuff will just kind of get messed up and I'll want to transfer the uh, the load to my quads because my uh, posterior chain is getting fatigued and stuff but you know that's not what you're looking for you're looking for a very controlled um, uh, internal rotation of the hips and pushing your knees just over your feet and uh, not really too far in I think it just kind of takes some experimentation you know Had 315 for three doubles. You see, any you kind of see my knees bob in and out a little bit, but I mean, you see any good Olympic lifters, especially, I see them do it. They have all sorts of knee action, but they're all right. My knees didn't hurt doing any of this, if that's ever anybody's concern. There's no pain. I guess here's the empty bar. And you can see that's externally rotated. Then internal, I'm not driving up there, it's just, whoops, not much. But then you get a lot of drive just like that. Not quite as much externally rotated. The internal, you drive yourself up. That little bit of speed out of the hole makes a big difference. Then I go try it with low bar, and it's uh, pretty different. 
I think just because you aren't going as deep and because there's so much uh, sitting back, not quite as much knee action to begin with, really. But you can see even here, my knee's bobbing a little bit. I'm trying to figure it out there. Low bar is still super weird for me, by the way. I've been kind of working in it a little bit each and every day, just trying to do a couple of sets of five with, you know, even just 135. Just getting comfortable with the movement again, and it's extremely awkward. So we got 135, and this is, yeah. I think 135. And I just, yeah, I didn't really feel quite as much benefit, maybe because the depth isn't quite as much as well. I don't know. But, you know, just something to kind of consider, something to have in your arsenal of tricks. Especially, you know, as a raw lifter, you want to be able to take advantage of everything you can, and as a geared lifter even. You know, if you can get two and a half kilos out of something, better be doing it. I also am uh, maxing my bench every day as well, and I got 300 pretty easy today. Um, so that's been an interesting experiment, but I haven't died or overtrained yet, and I've hit just about my max every single day. So, no problem. Until next time. Nope, never mind. Fooled ya. Got 185 here. That was 165 for 5. And then we got 185 for 5. Plan is just to keep slowly adding weight to the bar every time I squat don't want to go jumping back up to you know 300 plus right away I want to take my time working through the 200s because that's where that's why I think I've skipped each and every time I tried to come back so far it's just really slowly getting used to the weight again so that's the plan I'll try to get more video while I'm at home but it's kind of tough uh, give it a try check out the Dan Green video see how you like it and uh, just find out what works for you Peace.